Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon C70 versus the Canon C200. So I've been shooting on Canon C200s for the last couple of years and I gotta say I really love that camera and I've literally put thousands of hours on it. And when I saw the C70 came out, it seems like it was a really great answer to what a lot of the people were complaining about the C200, mostly being the 10 bit internal codec. So I went ahead and pre-ordered one on the very first day and I've been shooting with the C70 for the last couple weeks now. I wanted to go ahead and do a test to compare these two cameras because they have so many things in common, but they actually are catered towards a little bit different people. So I'm gonna test out some things like dynamic range, high ISO, slow motion, overexposure and underexposure recovery, as well as file size and playback. So we'll go ahead and get right into the testing. So first test is dynamic range. I went over to my friend Bryce's gym and he's got this big roll up door at his gym. So I thought this would actually kind of be a good setting to test the dynamic range. And if you encounter a situation like this, this is kind of like the worst nightmare for your camera usually. You can either expose for the highlights, so you're saving your highlights, but you're kind of crushing your shadows down, or you could expose for the interior and lift the overall exposure, but you'll probably wind up blowing some of your highlights. So in this setting, I went ahead and did both. First step is where I exposed for the highlights. So I wanted to try to not clip my highlights too hard. And then I went ahead and lifted the shadows by 75. So here's the C70 and here's the C200. So one of the things you'll notice on the C200 when I exposed for the highlights outside, it actually clipped some of the blacks like on my shirt and the heavy bag there. And then on the C70 here, you can see on the waveform that it actually doesn't clip at all. So it's showing it does reach into the shadows a little bit more, and it's not just necessarily noise reduction. Speaking of noise though, you can obviously tell the C200 is significantly more noisy in the shadows than the C70 is. So one takeaway I would have is if you are a C200 shooter, you'll probably be a lot better off if you go ahead and lift the exposure instead of underexposing and trying to save your highlights because you'll wind up with a ton of noise issues if you don't expose that way. Now here's the same exact setting where I exposed for the interior and I just kind of let the highlights fall where they did. So here's the C200 and here's the C70. One of the other things I notice in the highlights is I see on the wall, you can see that line there and you can also see that palm tree, whereas on the C200 you can't. So that's telling me there's a little bit more information in the highlights in the C70. Another thing that kind of jumped out at me was the difference in the colors. Uh, all the camera settings were matched exactly the same and they were shot on exactly the same ones and they're shot on tripods right next to each other with the same white balance. And the C200 always came in looking a little bit more green and the C70 came in looking a little bit more magenta. One thing I've noticed with all the Canon cinema cameras as well as the 1DX Mark III and the R5, they all sort of adhere to the same color science which tends to lean a little bit more magenta. And then on the C200, since it's a slightly older camera, it does push a little bit more green, especially in the shadows, than the other newer cameras that I just mentioned. This is something that can be corrected pretty easily in post-production with just a simple white balance adjustment, but I did figure it was worth noting. Next up is the three stop over and three stop under recovery. So this is kind of like worst case scenario, if you made a pretty bad mistake on your exposing, this is probably what you'd be looking at. So first step is the C70. You can see it's just like way overexposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back with just a simple correction and lumetri color. And I think you've got a pretty decently passable image. You know, the highlights are still clipped. Is it perfect? No, of course not. But it's better than where it started. And I would say that's really solid. So one of the things I thought going into this test was I personally thought the C200 RAW would have a pretty significant advantage here. So here's the C200. So on the C200, I went into the RAW tab and reduced the exposure by three stops. And as I compare these images side by side, I don't really have a strong preference for either one. To be honest, I feel like they're pretty similar. This is one of the things that really surprised me because I always felt it was one of the best things about the C200 was the highlight recovery. So if you did overexpose something, you could really pull it back. I would say the sensor on the C70 is really solid though. And it does a great job at, at pulling it back. To me, they look pretty similar. So this is just my interpretation of it, but let me know in the comments if you guys have a different opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think. So next up is the underexposure recovery. So I went ahead and massively underexposed both of these shots and they were matched exactly the same on both cameras. And here's the C200. And here's the C70. 
Now, I don't really have to point it out, but you can tell there's a massive amount of noise in the C200, especially in the darker areas over here. And on the C70, it's pretty astonishing how clean it is. One of the things I noticed too is, as I adjusted this on the C200, some of the black areas just didn't come back. They just remained crushed. That information was gone. Whereas on the C70, you can tell there's definitely some really nice noise reduction going on there, as well as there's actually more information there too. So to summarize, I would say in terms of highlight recovery, I would say the C70 and C200 are pretty similar. And in terms of shadow recovery, I would say the C70 is significantly better. Okay, so next up, we're talking about high ISO. So with the high ISO testing, I kind of noticed some interesting things. To put it in short, the C70 was better, but it wasn't exactly what I expected. First up is 1600. Here's the C70. I think this is an incredibly clean image, and I actually find it cleaner than the C200 at its native ISO of 800. Actually, I find it similar to like the C200 at ISO 400. It's super clean here. Now here's the C200. I find this to be a total usable ISO on the C200. Uh, it does have some noise, but as soon as you put a LUT on, it kind of goes away and it becomes totally usable. So next up is 3200 ISO. Here's the C70 and here's the C200. I find this is kind of the upper limit of where I can comfortably use the C200. Next up is 6400. This is kind of where things got interesting for me. I think the C70 still looks better here, but I would say they look a lot closer than they did before. Whereas at 1600 and 3200 ISO, the C70 is exponentially cleaner than the C200. At 6400 ISO, they get pretty close. I'd still edge it out to the C70, but you can see here, both images in log. And here's with the Rec. 709 LUT. And I didn't do any noise reduction here. I would say that if you did do some noise reduction on the C200, it would pretty much look the same as the C70 here. And now here's 12,800. Ideally, I wouldn't like to use either of these ISOs. I would say the C70 is doing just a tiny bit better here, but I think they're really, really close at this ISO. Whereas in the lower ISOs, I thought the C70 did way better. You can see once you get up to 12,800, it's not really doing that much better than the C200. One of the things I haven't mentioned yet in this test is the fact that you can put a speed booster on the C70 to give it a full frame field of view. So I will have some tests coming up with the R5, the 1DX Mark III, and the C500, comparing it to the C70. So if you're interested in those, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Okay, so next up is slow motion. In terms of 4K60, everything that's true in 24P is true in 60P. They really look very similar to me. Um, so I'm not really gonna go too in depth on that, but I will go over the 120P because there's some gigantic differences in that area. First up is the C70. It shoots 4K 10-bit 422, 120 frames per second footage with autofocus. It is in long gop, but in my personal testing, I haven't noticed a gigantic difference in the long gop codec versus the all eye codec. Also, it doesn't use the dual gain output of the sensor here. I did notice a tiny bit less dynamic range, but it still looks really good to me. And on the C200, you can't shoot 120p in RAW or in 4K. So it's actually 1080 and it's 8-bit 420. Um, another thing that isn't the best is you can't shoot in C-Log2. So you have to switch it over to C-Log3, which is gonna be less dynamic range. First up is the C70. You've got a really sharp detailed image. I think the colors look great. And now jump it over to the C200. To be honest, it almost looks like 720p. Like it's really bad. Personally, I've used the C200s for thousands of hours. I never use the 120p. Wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it looks professional. So moving on to file size and playback. One of the biggest complaints about the C200 is to get the most out of the camera, you have to shoot raw. And the, the downside with raw is it's not like black magic raw or red raw where you can change the compression ratios and get smaller file sizes. On the C200, it's a fixed compression ratio. So that means you're kind of stuck with these giant files. For me personally, this is actually one of the biggest reasons why I sold my C200 and picked up the C70. The type of work I do, the producers and directors I work for generally don't want the Canon RAW. In my experience, what I found is it's not accepted quite as much as Red RAW or even Blackmagic RAW. So what I'll usually have to do is transcode to ProRes 422 and then hand over the footage, which is a gigantic headache for me. So a lot of the times I'll be editing on the go and I'll just be editing right off my laptop and an SSD. Here's the specs of my laptop. It's not like the newest or best one, but it was the maxed out version from about a year and a half ago. And I can play back the C200 RAW at half resolution, whereas with the 4K out of the C70, 
I can play it back at full resolution without too many problems. I do find that the C70 files are just a little bit easier to work with, whereas the Canon RAW, it just, for whatever reason, Premiere crashes a little more with it. So another thing I'll touch on is file size. If you're shooting something like a commercial, where it's just short controlled takes, you know, I don't really find the file size to be a huge deal. It's kind of nice to have these big, strong files that can be pushed and pulled in the grade. But if you're doing something like a documentary shoot or a corporate shoot, or you're filming long interviews, file sizes can become a real issue. So for the C70 and the C200, I shot them side by side for a bunch of tests for this exact video. And on the C70, it was 62 gigs of files. And those were all shot in 4K, 10-bit, 422. On the C200, it was 145 gigs. So it was actually more than double. So you can see that, that that really adds up over time. And if you're shooting bigger projects for multiple days, that can make a pretty big impact in the way you store your files. For me, I don't like to delete files. I like to double back up everything. And those costs add up over time if you're shooting raw all the time. So one thing I won't be covering in too much depth in this video is autofocus. There's been a lot of talk on the internet about autofocus with the C70 being not as good as the C200. In my experience, they both kind of seem the same. I haven't done too much in-depth testing on this though, but I will recommend you to my friend Carlos who did a lot of testing on this. So I will link his channel in the description. So if you're interested, you could check that out. So who are these cameras for? I think these are both great cameras for almost the same thing. They can shoot corporate interviews, weddings, documentaries. There's a lot of different uses for these cameras and they're both gonna be great at it. So if you have either one, I would say just be stoked that you have a great camera. Personally, I love the C200, and even with all the updates with the C70, there's still a lot of great benefits to the C200. In the studio for the production that I run, we still run four C200s in there, and we're adding one more camera, and we're not gonna add a C70. Why? Because it doesn't have an SDI output. For me, that's not professional, and when you have to run long cable runs, like we run 100 foot SDI cable runs, you can't do that with an HDMI. So there's still some benefits to the C200 over the C70. I would say the C70, the first and most obvious benefit is the updated codec, the internal 10-bit, and you're gonna get a lot of nice to have features like the touchscreen interface that they updated, as well as a faster boot up time and a much better media playback option as well. One other major benefit of the C70 is you can properly monitor C-Log2. That was always an issue with the C200 for whatever reason it wouldn't let you properly monitor C-Log2. You can only monitor C-Log3. So that's really nice when you're trying to nail exposure. Another huge benefit of the C70 is the fact that it uses an RF mount. I don't personally own any RF glass and I don't really have any plans to buy any, but what that means is you can, like I mentioned, you can use a speed booster and you can get almost a full frame field of view. So that's really cool. It kind of makes it almost like a mini C500 in a lot of ways. Along with that, you can also put a PL mount adapter on. This is really cool because it allows you to use high-end cinema glass that's not really possible on the C200. One of the things I love about the C70 is if you want to, you could really strip it down, take the top handle off, and it almost just looks like a big DSLR. And you've got the flip out screen, which it, you know it's not the best for professional work, but if you're just kind of running around, you want to take some nice videos, or maybe you're filming in a place without a permit, that's gonna be a really nice option for you. In terms of image quality, I'd say the C70 is probably the winner pretty much across the board. And the C200, it's still a really solid performer. If I was looking to buy either one of these cameras in 2020 or 2021, I would probably go for the C70 personally. But if you have a C200 or you're looking at the C200, one of the benefits is you can get them used for significantly cheaper. I actually think the C200 now in 2020 or 2021 is more worth it than almost ever. When I bought the camera, it was $7,500 and you can get them used now for like 4,000. So that's a pretty great deal. Overall, I'd say these are both great cameras and I'm really glad I was able to do this test. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this comparison. If you like this kind of content, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.